Hey friends, Patrick here and let's send emails with Blazor today, I'd say. And I mean to be more exact, Blazor SSR. No interactive render mode, it is not necessary to do that. You can simply use static server-side rendering. So let's also call this Blazor SSR send email like that. And you see it here, .NET 8, the target framework, no authentication, interactive render mode, none. So no server, no web assembly and no auto. And to be more exact or precise, what we're going to use here is not the uh, SMTP class from Microsoft, for instance, we're going to use MailKit for that, even in the documentation, the official documentation of Microsoft, they say, guys, use MailKit, and you can actually see that here, there it is, SMTP client class, and when you scroll a bit further down, then you see remarks, important, we don't recommend that you use the SMTP class for new development because SMTP client doesn't support many modern protocols, use MailKit, for instance, or other libraries instead. And as you can see here, this is MailKit. And of course, there's a NuGet package for that. So this is what we're going to use. But let's first start simple with just building our form. And for that, I suggest we just move to the home razor component and maybe call this send email. All right. And maybe also use that as a header and we start with an edit form, all right? Because in that edit form, what I want is, I just want to uh, use a field for the recipient, so a to field in essence, then the subject and the body and then a button, and then to uh, use uh, a, a real mailbox in the end, we are going to use Etherreal. So you will see the service in a minute because there you can just create dummy email accounts. This is really nice for testing stuff like that. So here now, first the edit form. We need a model, of course. So maybe we should do that first. Always forget this to add maybe first a model for that. And here now let's create this thing here. And now here we add in essence, a DTO, maybe email request is, I think, a name that works. And this thing now is actually pretty simple. We have the property with a nullable string, the two variable or the two property. Then we have the subject and then we also have the body like that. All right, and now we can go back, save everything, of course. Here's a fly getting on my nerves. All right, please stop annoying me. And here, uh, what uh, code, code block first now. And uh, we need a parameter, of course, for the edit form, a model. So here now it's the email request, uh, the type email request. So please use it. Yep. And we call this email request like that getter and a setter and by default this is simply a new email request and now we can here set this thing to email request finally all right so now give this thing also a form name don't forget maybe you saw that when you watched my other videos you did right thank you very much and also i hope you subscribe to my channel thank you very much for doing that because when you do that you know that when you're going to use blazer ssr static server side rendering and you want to choose or use the edit form here you always have to set a form name this is the big difference to um, blazer server or blazer web assembly set the form name please like that and then uh, similar to server or anything else, we set the on submit method here. And let me add the method real quick. So void send email. So the error is gone like that. And now together with the form name, you need this attribute here, supply parameter from form, all right? And when you only have one form here on this page, then it's uh, sufficient to just use this attribute. Otherwise, you would have to add the form name like that and then, uh, for instance, say email form, all right? That's the thing that you have to know to make this work. All right, now let's continue with the actual form. Let me just close this thing, come on. Input text. So the first thing I want to use here is the uh, to value in the end. And we set this by email request to, and we add a class to make this a tiny bit better for the I. Empty dash two. Jesus, this fly is 
annoying me. And placeholder, I hope you don't hear it. Let's see. All right, so this is the recipient. Then we have the subject, pretty much the same thing. All right, and in the end, the body, but this is a text area now. Body, it is body like that. And in the end, we need a button. Type submit, and we also add a class like uh, button, button primary, for instance. Yeah, this should be it. All right, so this is our form in text for the recipient, in text for the subject, and text area for the body. All right, now comes the actual sending of an email. First thing, mail kit. So right click our project, we manage the NuGet packages and add mail kits. We just search for it and there it is. An open source .NET mail client library for Windows, Mac, Linux and mobile platforms such as iOS and Android. 112 million downloads. I think this is the right one. All right, and now we are actually able to use it so I will start with writing the actual code and then fill in the username, the password, and uh, the uh, the port, stuff like that, later when we have our account, all right? So let's do this together now. First, the actual email is a new MIME message, like that. And now you know or you see we need MIMEKit here that first and then we set our values so first from email from and you see here this is an internet address list so what can we do here well we just add something and this has to be a mailbox address and we parse a string here to make this work I know it might seem complicated it is complicated a little bit but this is how it works and when you know it then piece of cake right so after that, the recipient, pretty much the same thing, mailbox address, parse, and here we will enter our email address then. All right, now the subject, this is pretty simple. This is just the email, uh, email request subject. And regarding the body, we have to do that way. It's a new text part. And this is now text format html all right like that and here we set the actual text then to email request body this is our email and now comes mail kit so here we say using var smtp new smtp client like that and when you hit control and period you have two options you know it's system.net.mail or mailkit.net.smtp please choose that one mailkit.net.smtp very important so now when you fix your typos smtp we say smtp connects connect to What's that? Well, a host, all right, we get that in a minute. Then a port, can already enter this thing. Port will be 587. And then we also set, nope, not that one. Well, let's just try that. Secure, there it is, secure socket options. And this is then start TLS. Elevates the connection to use TLS encryption immediately after reading the greeting and capabilities of the server. If the server does not support the start, T, start TLS extension, then the connection will fail and the not support exception will be thrown, but it does. So let's use it. The next thing now is authentication. Nope, not authenticated, just authenticate with simply username and password. All right, again, we will enter that in a minute. And in the end then, we send our email and disconnect with true. All right, that's it. So now let's go to Ethereal and get our account first. There it is, this is what I'm talking about, ethereal.email, great thing. And here you can simply hit create Ethereal account. And today we have Joe Man, great name, great email address. And as you can see, this is the host. All right, so maybe we grab this one first and enter it here. So smtp ethereal.email it is. All right, and now regarding the email address, this is our email address. 
And let's use that as the uh, hard coded sending um, sending address. So the uh, sender of that. And this is of course BS here. I just wanted to add the uh, two of email request. All right. Yep, this looks good now. And let me also add it here. This is the email address and the password is now this thing. All right, again, short re recap, because maybe this was confusing. I totally forgot that, of course. For testing purposes, maybe I just uh, enter the same email address here, hard coded, but now we just use the form. I think this makes sense. So first, a my message with the from email address. Two will be set by the form, all right? So email request two then the subject also set by the form or by the user and same thing pretty much for the body and then here we need mail kit for the smtp client and here we just use our ethereal email stuff so the host the port and then also some options as you can see here <laughs> all right so secure socket options start tls for the authentication we just enter username and password so this means email address and password. Then we send the email with smtp.send email and then we disconnect. And that's pretty much it. And now I would say we just test this thing. So let's start the app. And here we can actually open the mailbox. There you have it. This is your etherip. There it is. This is your etherip mailbox. And now I saw that I also forgot to add a text here. So here just enter send like that we restart the application all right okay maybe just just a tiny fix all right this looks good i think and here again the mailbox so here let's just enter not the password the email address again so that would be this thing all right subject tests hey this is just a test like that or maybe we can add real emojis here. Great stuff. Now, drum roll, we hit send. Nothing happens, but here, let's just refresh. There it is. There's our email. To Joe Man, from Joe Man, as you can see here, from and to. The subject is test. And as you can see here, hey, this is just a test. We can also check plain text, but nothing changes really. All right, and that's it. This is the whole magic to writing emails with blazor or .NET in general really because of course you can grab this and use it in your .NET web api or wherever you want to use it but this is i think a great combina combination here with uh, blazor ssr so you can see that you can even do this with static server-side rendering alone of course to use a better practice maybe you use a separate service to do that stuff like that of course this is something that you definitely learn when you subscribe to my channel or when you check out the Donut Web Academy. So guys, if you learned something and like this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe. Maybe you want to support me on Patreon. Thank you very much to every single one of you. I love you for that. And again, maybe you want to check out the Donut Web Academy link in the video description. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I see you next time. Take care.